We think the business cycle peaks sometime in 20, end of 2025. And that would suggest a crazy sort of target that could get somewhere between half a million and a million dollars in Bitcoin. But who the hell knows, right? These cycles can be crazy. And this one feels more like the 2017, 16, 17 cycle than it does the prior cycle. And that cycle didn't have a lot of central bank printing. Well, not in the US, but central bank balance sheets were rising. We saw 20% growth and what happened of liquidity and what happened was crypto absolutely exploded. Welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today, as we step into a world of financial intrigue and dynamic market forces, Raul Pal gives his latest Bitcoin price prediction and when we can expect to see this massive target. Bitcoin is currently sitting just above $44,000, up over 47% just since last October. With the keen eye of a seasoned investor, Pal casts a spotlight on Bitcoin and the expansive cryptocurrency market, recognizing their significance against a backdrop of economic uncertainty. With an air of urgency, he also highlights the mounting concerns encircling the colossal $6 trillion debt maturation slated by year-end. Amid this fiscal tightrope walk, Pal discusses the economic indicators we're seeing, as well as the debt dynamics and the pivotal role of central banks in shaping the market in the last part of the year. He points out that the Federal Reserve, steadfast in their quest to maintain interest rates amidst a storm of mounting inflation and debt pressures, aim to orchestrate a balance between taming inflation's fiery wings and upholding the pillars of the economy. This steadfast commitment to a higher for longer approach stands as a cornerstone of the current economic narrative. As we journey through the latest interview with Raoul Powell, we'll look at the ripple effects across the investment landscape and how Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are now reshaping the very fabric of finance. Don't forget to share your thoughts and comments down below and leave a like if you enjoy the content we do here. I care about secular trends. Secular cycles, when you get them and capture them in the right point of the business cycle, become explosive. Remember that chart of the NASDAQ, the beach ball underwater exploding above the water because the Fed just took the foot off the gas pedal or the brake, sorry? That's the power of a secular trend. It outperforms any other trend and it's more calibrated to financial conditions. It's more juiced by the business cycle than anything else. These are the things that matter to me. And there's two massive secular trends that dwarf all others. Crypto. Here's the chart, the long-term chart of Bitcoin since 2013. Some people use this chart longer term. I used to. But the early cycle was so kind of ridiculous that it screws up the chart. Other than that, it's actually a perfect log trend. These cycles can be crazy. And this one feels more like the 2017, 16, 17 cycle than it does the prior cycle. And that cycle didn't have a lot of central bank printing. Well, not in the US. But central bank balance sheets were rising. We saw 20% growth and what happened of liquidity and what happened was crypto absolutely exploded. I kind of feel like that's the case. I don't focus on the end target. I fo focus on the structure. But I'm just showing you the magnitude of the opportunity. And we're still at one standard deviation oversold. It's all to play for. We've barely started. NASDAQ, another beautiful logarithmic tr trend. I mean, this is a killer it's all you need to know. Is the world going to be more digital tomorrow than it is today? Yes. Will it be more digital in two years' time than it is today? Yes. Will technology reach more adoption in the coming two years? Yes or no? Yes. I ran that poll on Twitter. 95% of people agree with me. Yet most people keep missing this trend. They don't want to believe it. It's expensive. I think it's a bubble. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, best fucking trend you've ever seen. So just capture the trend. It suggests the NASDAQ somewhere between 25 and 30,000 at the end of this cycle. That's another great set of returns. So those are the two mega trends. How do they compare? Well, simply put, going back to 1990, kind of the dawn of the internet and computing ages, the NASDAQ has just relentlessly outperformed. All of the noise you see on Twitter, oh, I mean reverting, the Nasdaq's expensive, blah, 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 blah. It is the biggest trend you've ever been given. And many of us in macro land 
didn't see this. We kept fighting it because of what happened in 2000, the bubble and bust. But that, as you can see, was extraordinary. The rest, super smooth. It's the same log trend, and I don't see that changing. Could we create another bubble based on AI in the exponential age? Sure. Let's make some bloody money from it, as George Soros would say. But I don't see any elements of a bubble. It's just a normal trend that eats all other equity sectors alive. There is no point owning other stocks. Every other bet is suboptimal in this world where everything is correlated. Raul believes that the more money that's printed, along with the government's quantitative easing, has resulted in complete malinvestment and massive inflation. He argues that while Americans may have benefited initially from the money printing, the rest of the world did not. Raul believes banks are attempting to achieve interest rate neutrality without completely destroying the world economy. However, investors have begun speculating that tighter financial and credit conditions for households and businesses are likely to weigh on economic activity. Raul looks at what economic indicators we can expect concerning inflation, the stock market, and the potential impact of cryptocurrencies on the global monetary system. I talked about the fact that the ISM is a repeating cycle since 2008 because of the debt refi cycle. So future ISM looks like past ISM inverted. So it suggests that we keep going into 2025, the end of 2025, which I've shown you in a number of different formats. And with that goes liquidity. I showed charts earlier how liquidity and ISM all go hand in hand. There's the chart of global liquidity and the NASDAQ just keeps going up. What a beautiful chart. That's the trend we're trading here. It's easy. Same with Bitcoin. The reason the Bitcoin correlation is actually lower than the NASDAQ is because of these super spikes on the upside, because it's so skewed to the right tail, which is amazing. So now when we put this all together, we can actually forecast using a number of proprietary things we use at GMI out into the future. Please do not expect this to be a crystal ball. Do not expect these exact targets. It's directionally going to give you an idea of what the next two years look like. It gives you that target that we talked about before of about 21,500 in the NASDAQ by May or June of next year. With Bitcoin, it gets even more interesting. You see, that gives us, it gives us a kind of extraordinary set of numbers, which make me think that these are overstating it. So I'm just going to assume that we'd halve these. Maybe they're right. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. The everything code is new. Yes, it's worked in the past, but who knows? Because it gives us crazy numbers like 218,000 by May. That's post halving, post ETF. It would give you a target of half a million bucks by 2026, which is in line with the log trend. So it's possible. It doesn't feel like the most probable outcome. It feels a bit ludicrous to me. But anyway, directionally, half the numbers. Assume Raoul is a total moron, which certainly my wife would do. Um, then you still get great numbers. So it's all to play for. And that makes me interested. Now, Bitcoin's actually not the horse I'm going to back in this race. Crypto is the horse I back the most. It's the fastest horse in the race, best risk adjusted returns, high correlations to this global liquidity index, which is our everything code. So we know how the asset price behaves, which gives us a competitive advantage when we use our proprietary frameworks. Beautiful chart here, FedNet liquidity and Ethereum. Bitcoin has actually outperformed FedNet liquidity the beach ball underwater. Why? Because of the narrative around the ETF. In macro crypto spring, Bitcoin always outperforms. Much like in macro spring, treasuries tend to outperform credit. Later, when we move to macro summer, alts, ETH first, Solana, others will start to massively outperform Bitcoin, much like junk bonds outperform um, treasuries. So ETH is just doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it's not giving us the big surprise. I think that surprise comes the moment the ETF is out in Bitcoin and people will focus on the ETH ETF and it'll bring the ETH ecosystem alive. It's This year, it's been a story of Solana, which I've been along all year, um, and um, Bitcoin. That barbell has been the best trade in the world. or well, in fact, just owning Solana has been the best trade in the world, bar none. Um, but ETH, it'll play catch up. It'll do well. Raul Powell uncovers how changes in cryptocurrencies can send ripples effects through our wallets. Imagine a world where borrowing money becomes more expensive. Those cool credit card deals and car leases might not be as sweet, but it's not just about numbers. It's about fairness and how many things we can buy. 
Among the market noise, Bitcoin emerges as a rebel in the money world, shaking up old traditions. Powell points out that the everything code is like saying money is this invisible thread that's connecting it all together. With big banks being the guardians of balance, he says they're working behind the scenes to keep things steady, preventing financial chaos, but he believes the inevitable is coming. What do you think about the latest interview with Raoul Powell? And how do you think his prediction for Bitcoin, crypto, and the financial market plays out in the last part of 2023? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.